In today's video, I attempt to survive on a floating island for one day in Ark Survival Evolved. I won't be going to sleep at all and throughout the entire challenge I'll be playing solo. To see just how much progress I can make in one of the most exposed and open locations in all of Ark. If you'd like to see more of these challenges in the future, make sure to comment down below and leave a like. And with all that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. Hey guys, Vitality here, and welcome to a brand new video idea. I've had this video in the vault for a while. Surviving solo on a floating island has always been an interesting idea to me. I've seen a couple of people do it, so I thought, you know what? Might as well write it down to do in the future. And I woke up this morning and I finally decided to get to it. So at the moment it's day one and I'm just rocking this stone base for now. I need to farm up a bit of metal before we do some upgrades. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit late to the wipe. It's been about half a day, roughly 12 hours. The wipe time in Australia is just absolutely ridiculous. Wiping at 3 a.m. is just, it's, I, I, get waking up for that time is a mission. <laughs> That's all I can say. So yeah, we're a little bit late to wipe, but I think we can work that in our favor. A lot of other people have been building up around me, and I think if I just get straight into some raids instead of grinding myself, we could take advantage of that. So I'm just farming up some C4, nothing too crazy. We'll see if we can find ourselves an easy raid to get on our feet. I'm sure there's some absolute bobs out there that have been grinding away that are just waiting for me to swoop in and take their loot, but I guess we'll have to see. If there was some type of award for building in the weirdest space location, I reckon this guy might win. I have never seen this one before, it is certainly a new one to me. There's like no tactical advantage to it at all, there's not even any decent resources around here. I mean, aside from that terminal down there somewhere. But like, really? <laughs> it's so odd. Um, but I'm gonna raid it. I scouted this a few minutes ago and I went back to base to grab some flame arrows because as you can see, the junction boxes are exposed. Seems like we always get a few bases like this. Which is always super interesting, but um... I'm not seeing a body down there, so there's a chance he's away from his base. So we might want to get a bit of a move on here. There's really no skill to this. It's basically just... Oh, that was close. Yeah, it's basically just shooting into, into nothing and hoping for the best. Oh, that was so close. It helps to turn your sensitivity down, but... I think I might be able to do this just normally. Yeah, okay, we got that side down. Let's see if we can do this side as well. Oh, this last one's a little bit tricky. That was so close. I think I'm way off now. Yeah, as you guys can see, it's always important to properly defend your base and arc. And the same goes for your personal data and online identity. Which brings me to today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Keeping the information that gets sent between your device and the internet protected is incredibly important, especially in the world of gaming. Surfshark VPN encrypts your online data and helps to secure your personal information, protecting you from DDoS and stopping any malicious attempts to obtain your IP. With Surfshark's clean web feature, you can also block ads, trackers, and malware, allowing you to browse the internet to your heart's content. Surfshark can also change your virtual location, which can be incredibly beneficial to gamers such as myself and all of you. By switching time zones, it's possible to bypass geo restrictions and access streaming content only available in other countries. This is something that I use Surfshark for frequently and I'm incredibly happy with the results. Having the ability to virtually fly to another country to fulfill my streaming needs is a huge win. So what are you waiting for? Click my link in the description and top comment below to get an extra 3 months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee as well, so there's absolutely no risk in trying it out. Massive thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Nice, we got it. Alright, I think I'm going to kill these Bloodstalkers first. Yeah, they look down to me. Oh, I was wrong, I was very wrong. Something else is shooting me and I'm not sure what it was. But that was unbelievably close. Right, well that could have been devastating. Oh, there's two turrets underneath. There must be a junction box under there. We should be able to come in from the top then, hopefully. Yeah, that should be fine. I'm just going to kill these Bloodstalkers from up here. Really don't fancy um, yeah, getting pulled in or anything. 
Alright, let's just see for these beds quickly. And then we'll go after that generator. Most scuffed raid of all time. Ah, oh, the generator's under the vaults. Okay, that's fine. We just have to remember not to fly up. <laughs> oh my days! That is unbelievably fat. What on earth? We got some flak BPs. God damn. I'm keen to check what these loadout mannequins have. Need to chuck that on though first. Yeah, we got like, what? Decent legs BP, decent chest BP. I mean, it's not flak, but it's better than nothing. Ooh, okay. Magma saw, that'll be quite helpful. Uh, low level Maywing, Arthur, Bolonosaur. Hopefully one of these loadout mannequins has got some more C4 for me. So I don't have enough to break into that vault. Alright, we're gonna check all of these loadout mannequins and the Indie Forges as well in one go. Just gonna destroy this one quickly, it's the last one. Most of them are probably gonna be empty, but you never know. It's worth checking. Yeah, that one's empty. <laughs> Oh, okay, we got some C4. Um, realized as well I don't actually need any more C4 because I got that R through, so we can get through those vaults pretty easily. Oh, we got another R through. These guys had quite a few resources. They were quite the farmers. Oh, better shotgun as well. That's what we like to see. Really looking for those soaking tames. Um, we got some more raiding equipment. A PT. Nothing too crazy. What do we got in here? Even more raiding equipment. We got some Daodons. A bit of raw metal. A bunch more PTs. God, these guys were stacked. Um, oh, we got a Rhino. 278, jeez. It's probably enough to do an Elevane on. Nothing too crazy in there. I think there's some fertilized eggs. Yeah, nothing in there. Uh, we got another Maywing. Even more raiding equipment. Some really decent flak. Decent shotgun as well, yeah. God, these guys are fat. I don't know how they got all this stuff, but I'm keen to check what's in those vaults. Even more shotguns. Oh, was that the same one? My bad. Um, yeah. Not much in there. I'm not seeing anything like mind blowing. Oh wow, that's a lot of metal. Okay, yeah, I take it back. <laughs> okay, well I'm gonna start going through these vaults with the Arthur, and I'll just pick out what I want from these loadout mannequins. I'll do like a general overview at the end to show you guys any of the highlights. Oh, uh, whoops. The Arthur is unfortunately being very uncooperative, so I just decided to use C4. Ooh, 50 armor Stego Saddle. That's actually decent. And a Gigantopithecus. <laughs> well, we got a Tech Rifle as well, but I don't think we can use it without the Engrams. Um, can I get this generator now? Yeah, I can. Okay, Stance. Attack your target. Hey, it's decided to work. Thank God. I might blow one of these turrets just to check how much ammo we got going as well. I've already checked the blood stalkers and they were empty, unfortunately. But can I really complain? This is turning out to be a very fat raid. Let's have a look. Okay, next to nothing. Oh, finally. This Arthur took its sweet time. Alright, this is the other vault. Ooh, what do we got here? Okay, nothing too crazy, but that's an insane Mantis saddle. Looks like we got some incredible shotguns as well. Decent turtle saddle, so overall, honestly, I'm so happy with this. Like, I'll just give you guys a quick rundown of all the stuff that we got. Just an amazing amount of resources and some decent BPs as well. I got a bunch of metal going as well, so, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. I think I've definitely got to upgrade my base just a little bit after this find. So yeah, I'll head back and I'll, I'll start working on that for sure. Talk about a serious upgrade. Holy, 
That raid has definitely set us up for a decent wipe. Oh, I see someone over there. Nice try landing behind the tree, but you didn't. I didn't miss you. Oh no, his PT's coming after me. <laughs> Unlucky, mate. Alright, well I'm going to head over there and PvP him in a second. I've just got quite a fat kit on me, so I don't want to lose that. But yeah, as I was saying, I've got a pretty decent base going here. I'll show you guys the inside really quick. Um, very compact. <laughs> Had to fit in as much as possible. I've uploaded all of the major stuff as well, just so there's no risk of losing it. But, you know, it's all going quite well. This island seems to be an absolute hotspot for people coming through. I know that lake down there is really popular, so everyone's just been scouting me. Which isn't ideal, but I think as long as we're online we can defend quite easily. I'll probably end up throwing down a few turret towers over the course of the day. Looks like this guy's run off as well. He's definitely not going to be the last person to try and scout this base, but... Somebody ominously dropped this dodo on my base called I'm going to raid you. He straight up sent me a message, so I'm sure he'll be coming over anytime soon. I think the best way to build on a location like this is to build a cage base or a skeleton base. I'm sure you guys have seen those in other videos. Or just around, they're pretty popular. And uh, they're quite good designs, but for that I'm going to need tech. We've got some decent shotguns, so we could do the aberration boss. Uh, but to do the alpha boss, we're going to need some other person. The alpha boss on aberration gets you to level 120, and it unlocks all engram for tech turrets. So we're just going to need to find someone willing to do it with me. We've got some decent shotguns, so that shouldn't be a problem. I might, like, hit up my Discord and see if I can recruit anyone. See if anyone would be down for a boss fight. Because, uh, yeah, shotguns are not going to be the issue. We're about to run the alpha aberration boss with an absolute legend. Not sure what his name is, but he's lending me a helping hand, and we're supposed to be meeting at this white drop here. Uh, we've still got 100 Jura on this drop, so hopefully you shouldn't be too long. But yeah, we're using that shotgun we got from the raid. Super, super decent. 300% damage and like over 2k durability. Not even sure how this is possible. Like, that's a crazy shotgun. Um, but yeah, it should melt the boss fight. I think this is him. We are absolutely tearing this boss apart. We should get it done in no time. And hopefully once we've done that, we should have an easy Ellie Vein on the way. I think we got a tame that'll make an Ellie Vein pretty easy. Like, I'm pretty sure we got a Rhino or something, so we should be able to use that. Just got to finish this boss fight, pretty much. Um, but yeah, we're doing it with these. This shotgun's just absolutely insane. Don't know what else to say about it. It's absolutely cracked. Oh, it's about time, finally. So, we got quite a few engrams, but unfortunately we did not get the tech turret. So we're going to have to hit level 120 and unlock it that way. Uh, but yeah, as I said before, an Ellie Vane should get the job done. Uh, but yeah, let's hope my floating island hasn't been raided, but it probably has. <laughs> there were so many people flying around it, so I'll be genuinely surprised if it's still up when I get back. Okay, so thankfully, base is still here. It's a positive. Um, but I think before I run an Ellie Vane, I want to go on a raid. We've also got to get some battery heavies just to, you know, secure the Ellie Vane once we do it. It's probably not a necessity, but I just want to get it just in case. And we've also not got a Mantis, so I'm hoping we can uh, go on a raid and find one. It's not that I'm against taming my own Mantis, it would just be a lot easier to find one on a raid. But I think we should be able to do an Ellie Vein with this Rhino. 635% melee and 5k health. It's not bad at all, and I think if we're only doing like a 10k, 25k, should get the job done. So yeah, I'm going to go and have a scout. Can't raid anything too big, um, just because we don't have any soakers yet. We got no stegos or trikes, but I'll probably go and tame some in a little while. I'm putting it off just a little bit because, yeah, it's a lunar biome and absolutely hate the lunar biome. Uh, but you never know, we might find some on a raid. So I'm going to get scouting and I'll see what I can come up with. I've been scouting for about an hour. Haven't come across anything I can actually raid yet. I'm looking for another easy flame arrow base and because I don't have any soakers, most of the turret bases I come across I can't actually raid. So I decided I'd take a bit of a break from scouting and I'm currently trying to tame some mantises. I've got some bug repellent so that should hopefully make it a little bit easier. The thing is though, like the smallest things will set these guys off. Like yeah, this guy's gone for my Maywing. Okay, I think the highest level I've found is 90 so we're just going to try and go for this one. Nice. 
We'll cry this one, but I'll keep looking for a higher level because this one doesn't have much melee. Oh, 130. Okay. Hopefully we can get this one. No issues. Nice. Okay, that's awesome. Two hundred melee. It's pretty bad, but it's gonna have to do. Might get those battery heavies going, and then I'll go back to looking for some bases to raid. We might get a bit more lucky this time around. Hey, lads, we found a base. Didn't take that long, actually. I wasn't scouting for for a long amount of time. I've basically just been searching through that video I posted a couple of weeks ago. I showed off 10 new base locations and it looks like there's somebody here that's decided to build on them. Not too sure what this guy was thinking, it was always going to be the first place I checked, especially on my servers, but I commend his bravery. Doesn't look like there's any turrets here either, which is nice. If you guys don't know, there's an air pocket here under the water. Pretty sneaky, I think it stayed quite hidden for quite a while, um, and then I exposed it in a video. Somebody might have exposed it before me, uh, but I personally only found out about it a couple of months ago. Hopefully they've got some decent stuff for us. Oh, two vaults. No body though. Alright, we'll wait for that wreckage to, to dissipate. We might as well get the Indie Forge as well if we can. I'm actually kind of surprised that the Indie Forge can turn on down here. What are we talking for metal? It's empty. That's not a good sign. Oh god, that's not a good sign either. Oh no, that's not bad actually. Maywing Egg. We got some drop stuff here. Uh, power generator. We got a level 59 Maywing. God damn. Fabricator, kind of empty as well. What's this, preserving bin? Yeah, pretty much empty. I'm going to wager a bit of a guess and say his good stuff is in the, uh, the vaults. It's where I'd keep it at least. Um, but I don't have enough C4 for both of them, so... I'm going to hope this one's got the decent stuff in it. Uh, we got a bag, thankfully. What do we got in here? Um, yeah, pretty much nothing but complete garbage. <laughs> uh, I guess I've got to go back to base now and get some more C4. That shouldn't hopefully take too long. So with all that being said, I successfully managed to last 24 hours. And at this point, I was very, very sleepy. You can probably start to hear it in my voice. Unfortunately, around this time as well, I was getting online raided. And eventually they went away when they realized I was online but unfortunately it didn't take long for them to come back and once I'd fallen asleep they wiped my base. So this will be the end of this mini sort of series, this short one episode. I just wanted to attempt this and I, I didn't think I'd be able to do it seriously but I wanted to have a good go. I actually have an upcoming duo series that I recorded with Xavi and that'll be dropping in about a few days or so. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, make sure to leave a like and hit subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.